Hey there, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Friends, I made a video yesterday called uh, The Genomic Investor's Lament. And many of our subscribers wrote back to me saying that we have got to be positive because there is a lot of thing to be optimistic about. And I thought I'll do a little bit of study just to validate that thought. And I think they are all right. There is a lot of things that are happening in this field. And it's just that we are a bit ahead of our schedule. And this channel, as well as you and I as uh, retail investors in genomic uh, technology companies, we are ahead of the time. Our time will come. Uh, it's not now. It's just in the near future. Uh, because the market is not looking at gene technology right now. They are looking at AI, which is the latest shiny object. And then they are looking at dividend plays, which will give them good um, money. And of course, they are looking at bond. This high interest environment has distorted everything. In today's video, I'm going to show you why I am really optimistic about gene therapy and why I believe we are ahead of the curve and that our ship will come very soon. Let's get started. Welcome back, friends. The CRISPR revolution entered its second decade with the significant progress in clinical development of genomic medicines. What I have done today is compiled a detailed look at the ongoing CRISPR clinical trials targeting various genetic disorders, infectious diseases, and cancer, I've gone across companies. Some of them may or may not be in our watch list, but I just went through them to see who are all in the clinical trials and where they are. It's looking good. So clinical trials for genetic uh, disorders uh, like sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia have already seen uh, therapies which are in the market with the FDA approval uh, that we have got CASJV in there uh, and we have got uh, Zinteglo and uh, of course, uh, we also have SkySona for CALD. So there's a whole bunch of uh, therapies already approved. Um, I think uh, by end of 2023 and early 2024. So overall, I think uh, we have seen uh, the market take up these pricey uh, therapies. Um, already 5 CASJV has been uh, executed in terms of cell collection from the uh, patients. Uh, that's what we got in Vertex Q1 report. So overall, I think it's uh, pretty good. Now, I would like to put up a, a table on the screen and then talk to you about it. I will start with uh, CRISPR therapy, uh, therapeutics CASJV because uh, the pediatric dose is still in a clinical trial. Uh, so that needs to happen. And um, they already got approval in December 2023 for treating SCD and beta thalassemia for um, uh, non-pediatric patients. So that's a positive one. And the second one is CTX211, which is a diabetes therapy, which is being developed by uh, CRISPR Therapeutics. And um, uh, it's for type 1 diabetes. It's going undergoing phase 1 slash 2 uh, clinical trials. And then we have got uh, uh, Prime Medicine, uh, which has uh, come up with uh, PM359 therapy, which is X vivo cell therapy for CGD. Then we have uh, cardiovascular and uh, metabolic disorders. I'll start off with Verve 101, sponsored by Verve Therapeutics, and it employs in vivo gene therapy to inactivate PCSK9 gene, lowering LDLC levels to prevent cardiovascular diseases. It's in phase 1b. And then we have Verve 102, another Verve Therapeutics candidate in preclinical stages, expected to start phase 1b trials in early 2024. Of course, we have CTX310 from CRISPR Therapeutics in vivo gene therapy targeting ANGPTL3 gene to lower serum lipids. This phase one trial has already begun. Of course, again, another we have CTX320 targeting lipoprotein A for cardiovascular disease. And CTX320 is in preclinical stages with trials expected to start any time now because they said it will start in the first half of 2024 and we are almost close to June. So before the end of June, I'm expecting that uh, it would get started. So that kind of rounds out all the therapies that are in clinical trials for cardiovascular and metabolic disorders. And of course, we have thrown in a few preclinical trials out there because they are almost imminent to get into clinical trial very shortly, which means within a month or so. Then we have neurological disorders and uh, immune system uh, disorders, for which I think there are two therapies that I could find. The first one is uh, NTLA 2001, developed by Intelia Therapeutics in collaboration with Regenron, and it targets the TTR gene. This phase three trial is ongoing, 
um, hereditary angioma is uh, the next one, HAE, uh, with NTLA 2002, which is also another intelia therapeutics candidate, which uses CRISPR-Cas9 to disable the KLKB1 gene. And it's currently in phase 1 slash 2. So that kind of rounds up uh, the candidates that are in neurological disorders and immune system disorders. This next brings me to the category of infectious diseases. So in infectious diseases, I've got four candidates out here. And I think infectious diseases is a place where uh, there is going to be a wide range of dispersion of gene technology. And uh, the first one out here is Excision uh, uh, Biotherapeutics EBT 101. Excision is a private company, but I'm watching it very closely because they may come up with an IPO sooner rather than later. And um, uh, this is uh, a therapy that is aimed to remove HIV from the genome using CRISPR-Cas9. So all this editing happens within the body. So it's a very advanced uh, technology and it's in phase one slash two trials. Recently, they completed phase one successfully. And for phase two, which involves efficacy, they will have to probably do dose manipulation in order to get the desired efficacy. So everyone is waiting to watch what happens out there. Then we have hepatitis uh, uh, B, which is uh, another indication for which a company called uh, Tune Therapeutics is uh, working on Tune 401. Uh, and uh, it's an in vivo CRISPR therapy for hepatitis B currently in preclinical stages with human trials expected by the end of this year. And then we are looking at bacterial infection, LBP EC01 uh, from Locus Biosciences. It's a CRISPR enhanced uh, bacteriophage therapy for UTIs caused by multi drug resistant E. coli. And it's in phase 2 slash 3. And of course, after that, we have biomes. CRISPR phage therapy targeting E. coli, which has completed phase one trial. Now we talk about oncology, which is a place where gene therapy has established itself very solidly. It's just a bit unfortunate that the CD19 and BCMA targeting CAR-T therapies have been given a black box label by FDA, but there are uh, autologous therapies also, which are allogenic therapies also, which are available or which are in clinical trials, which hold a lot of promise. Now let us look at the whole bunch that I have here of around four uh, therapies that I've selected to showcase. Uh, the very first one is uh, CRISPR cancer clinical trial for BEAM201. It's a quadruple edited CAR T cell therapy by BEAM Therapeutics targeting relapsed or refractory uh, TALL or TLL in phase 1 slash 2 trials. And then we have CTX112 from CRISPR Therapeutics, which is an anti-CD19 CAR T cell therapy for B cell malignancies. This is allogenic and it's in phase 1 slash 2 trials. Again, another allogenic CTX131 targeting both hematologic and solid tumors, uh, which is an anti-CD70 CAR T cell therapy in phase 1 slash 2 trials. And we have FT825 slash uh, ONO820 developed by FATE Therapeutics. I had done just one video on FATE. Uh, I haven't covered it much. But this therapeutic is uh, this therapeutic trial is worth mentioning out here. It's been done by FATE in collaboration with Ono Pharmaceutical and it targets HER2 expressing solid tumors. The phase one trial has been initiated. I think uh, this kind of rounds up all the therapies that I could find out. These were six categories uh, in which I had clubbed all these uh, different uh, therapies that are under clinical trial. I would conclude by saying that the rapid advancement in CRISPR technology is nothing short of revolutionary. We tend to forget that because once we have invested our money, our sense of time gets warped and it seems like a lot of time has passed. But when it comes to technologies like this, there's a lot of work involved and the time taken is much longer. Uh, but I would say that CRISPR uh, is uh, promising to reshape the landscape of medicine and offer hope where once there was little and all those uh, ailments from which people used to suffer for which there was no treatment. Now there's a hope for getting treatment. From pioneering treatments for genetic disorders and life-threatening cancers to tackling cardiovascular and infectious disease, these companies are in the forefront of a new era in biotechnology. Each clinical trial uh, represents a bold step forward, harnessing the power of gene editing to not only treat, but potentially cure some of the most challenging condition known to humanity. And as investors and enthusiasts, I think we stand at the cusp of this incredible journey, witnessing the dawn of a future where precision medicine, personalized medicine becomes a re reality. And together as a community in ShareTrek, let's remember that we are ahead of the game when it comes to a focus on genomic investment. 
I don't think the rest of the stock market is yet looking at gene, th gene therapies as a serious contender. Their focus is more on AI because they are looking at low hanging fruits where there is a low risk and high rewards. That's what they are looking for. But friends, if anyone wanted to get into AI market right now, it's very expensive and the risks are stacked against them. But those who caught AI wave very early are very happy. They can take all the profits right now and get out and re-enter when the risk is lower. So I think we will be in a similar, section, uh, similar situation uh, when genomic medicine takes off. We already seen the marketing of uh, 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 CASGV, uh, Zinteglo, Skysona, uh, Chimera, and so many other uh, therapies, uh, which are gene therapies approved by FDA. But many have been very, very expensive. Soon we'll see another slew of medicines in various areas, uh, and um, that's going to attract more patients. And as we have more and more therapies into the market, the investor attention will turn from small molecules and uh, the other interventions into gene therapies. And uh, that's when we'll see a big uptick in the momentum for uh, gene technology companies. By that time, we would be ready to reap the profits. An early catalyst would be the AI hype. I'm suspecting that there will soon be genomic companies that will promote themselves as AI enabled and they will be able to get the money because all the gene therapy companies we have right now don't have an AI component and they are not sexy. But if any of these gene therapy companies were to put an AI label on them, then suddenly they will attract a lot of interest. So I'm going to look out for those kind of companies and if I find any, I'll make a video on them. And uh, I think... Uh, the AI wave is uh, in full swing right now and it's uh, making a lot of investors millionaires. Our ship will come, friends. The gene therapy companies will also find a wave uh, maybe in a couple of years from now. We are early to the game. We need to be patient. But we have to be also careful about our risk allocation. We cannot put all the eggs in one basket. So diversification is very, very important. But one thing is very clear. Among this crowded field in gene therapy companies, I think CRISPR stands out as the strongest of the prospects. So my vote is on CRISPR. I'd like to hear from you guys what you think. Please put it in the comment section. Bye for now.